Hey everybody, welcome into another video on the channel. Today we're going to be talking about maybe the most important part of improvising, which is telling a story. We're going to investigate a few different ways to do that and figure out what we like best. And hopefully you can transfer some of these lessons into the practice room. So at the end of the day, as musicians, we are storytellers. We just tell our stories through our instruments, through expressing ourselves in the jazz language. But you can bet that if you're not putting together a story for your listeners, they're gonna tune out almost right away. Think about watching a movie with no storyline. Doesn't make sense. It doesn't really exist for good reason. And the most captivating movies and books and TV shows are ones with a really strong storyline. That's what we wanna to try to get into our solos. Sometimes we can get so caught up in what we're going to play and trying to play the hippest harmonic material that we can completely forget about actually telling a story and having an arc to our solos. Now, it's important to realize what I'm going to present to you here is stuff for the practice room, really thinking about that story arc, trying different ways to complete that story arc. That's what you want to do in the practice room so that when you're on stage, you just naturally tell a story. It's just like everything else in jazz. You want to practice things to the point when you're by yourself, that when you're actually in front of an audience and you're doing the thing for real, it just kind of flows out of you without even trying. And that's the whole reason for being in the practice room in the first place. Okay, so let's look at a couple of story arcs and figure out if we like them or not with musical examples. So the first story arc is going to be your classic. Start with an opening statement or an exposition. That arc slowly builds into a climax portion of your story. Then we slowly come down from that climax. We de-escalate and then we have a resolution at the end of the story so that everybody can go home happy, feeling great about the story that they just heard. Now, before I do the musical example of myself trying to do this over a blues form, I wanna say a couple things. First of all, this is much easier to say than do. When you're actually playing the instrument and you're trying to follow this story arc, Parts of it are nebulous, right? It's going to be impossible to just completely nail this story arc 100%. What you want to try to do is approximate it in your solos. And you'll hear that when I'm playing. I'm not going to be following it perfectly. When I'm at the climax, you might hear me interject with something a little bit more calm. That's okay. What we want is just for the general flow of our solo to follow this arc. So let's listen to myself playing over the blues and trying to follow this general story arc. <laughs> Okay, so hopefully I reflected that, you know, it's a really, again, it's a really tough thing to do. And I was having a lot of trouble keeping this in my mind and playing, but that's why I'm practicing it is to hopefully get better at telling this arc 
of the story. Now you'll notice that this particular arc is good for when you have an unlimited amount of time to solo because there's a lot that goes into this particular story arc. It's got to start down here, build, come up, come back down and end down here. So this is a particularly good story arc if you just have an open solo and you can play for as long as you want. Okay, so let's take a peek at the second story arc. So this one starts again with that exposition, that initial statement. Then we build from there to the climax, but then we never come down from that climax. We end our solo really, really strong. And this is a good way to maybe leave the listeners wanting a little bit more. Or if you're playing in a band with, let's say, another horn player, or another soloist, this is a great way to pass off a really, really high energy statement to the next soloist. And you can actually almost influence their solo a little bit, which is a beautiful part of jazz, is that it's not just all of these separate entities playing together. We really want to play off of each other. So this can be a really effective story arc. You can decide whether you like this one better or worse, or you're indifferent to the first one. But what this one is missing is the de-escalation and that closing statement that's a little bit more chilled out again. Let's see what I could do with this one. So you can hear that solo followed the first solo generally on the way up, but then it just kind of never came down and ended on a high note. Okay, let's take a look at the third story arc, which is the exact opposite of the last one that I played. Sometimes you're coming off of an energetic melody or the band is in such a state when you start your solo that you're gonna wanna start it really, really big at that climax right from the very beginning. And this can be in a very exciting way to start your solo. You can really kind of tell the audience, hey, I'm here, I'm about to make this statement and I'm gonna start making this statement in a big way. So the beginning of the solo can be very, very effective and grab your listener's attention. Then what you wanna do is slowly wind down that solo at the end and still have that resolution. Now, I'm not too sure that I like this story arc. It's not natural for me. So this is one that I'm not sure works too well for me as a player, but it could work beautifully for you. Let's hear what this one sounds like.
So I don't know if you could tell or not, but I was feeling a little bit awkward toward the tail end of that solo coming down off that climax. It just felt a little unnatural for me. Okay, let's go on to our final story arc. And this one basically just eliminates the exposition, the opening statement, and it also eliminates that resolution as separate sections. Basically what I'm doing is I'm condensing that first story arc that we listened to into a much smaller section of music. So I still am trying to kind of start out down here, but then I'm building much more quickly. And this can be a perfect option for, let's say you're playing in a big band and you just have a short solo section or you're playing with a quartet and you've decided that we're not gonna take super long solos. Or if you just prefer a shorter solo statement, you could still get that complete arc into a much smaller space. So you're gonna hear me start off, I'm gonna start building almost right away, hit that climax section, and then after not too long, I'm gonna come back down and do that resolution, that de-escalation into the resolution section. Let's check out what this one sounds like. Okay, so now you've heard four story arcs that I came up with that I wanted to try on this video. But the important thing is that the options, just like everything in jazz, are kind of endless. So you might want to dedicate a part of your practice time to make sure that there is some kind of arc to your solo. When you listen to the greats, they have a masterful way of doing this that keeps you on the edge of your seat. Again, it's just like a good movie. If whoever wrote the story knows how to tell a great story, you are going to be on the edge of your seat for the entire film. And that's what we want when we're playing music. Think about the great symphony writers of the past, Beethoven, Brahms, Stravinsky. If you really listen to that music with the story in mind and the arc, you will realize that it's all built in there. Same thing with the great storytellers in jazz. Coltrane, Miles Davis, Thelonious Monk, all of those people knew how to tell a story and they told it very effectively. And that is why you keep going back to listen to those recordings over and over and over again. They're captivating. So I hope this video has been of some use to you. Maybe give you something to think about in the practice room when you're done working on all your really specific stuff like your harmonic language, working out your technique, all those technical parts of music. Now you can think about the more broad topics like telling a story. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It is free and that really, really helps us in the YouTube algorithm to get these videos out to more people just like you who can use them. If you love this video, think about subscribing and turning on that little bell notification. That way you'll never miss a video. And most of all, thanks for taking time out of your day to watch this video. And again, I hope it has been of some use to you. Hope everybody's doing well out there and we'll see you on the next video. Have a good one, everybody. Bye.